Hello, 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 and welcome down to the Rough Cut Golf Podcast on what is the most special week of the year. The Masters has finally arrived. The long, cold, dank winter is over, and those first shoots of a verdant spring are coming through. I am joined again by Kieran, by Jacob, and by Mick to discuss the most momentous of occasion. Someone this week will be slipping on a green jacket and we are going to discuss exactly who that will be. Gentlemen, how are we? Very excited. Very excited. It, Very excited. It just, <laughs> can't be asked, no, it not just, there's something about this week that just makes everything, uh, in, in, all in, of golf, just completely, it just really just pulls me straight back in again. Oh. I think it, I kind of lose the sort of professional golf element and then that first major, the Masters, comes round and you start watching the, like, the old versions of it on YouTube and just that, it just brings it back again and it just gets you really excited for what hopefully is going to be a very good week of golf. I can't remember... You, I haven't watched the 2019 final round of the Masters in about four days. Really? So So I need to to get back into that. um, It's one of the best things they did, by the way, the Masters is mm -hmm. kind of put the final rounds up. Their YouTube channel is just full of fire. What what happened in 2019? Yeah, Some Mm. geezer. Some up wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I think he dropped off. I think he had an injury, but I'm sure he'll be back at some point. Um, in the last week, I have watched Hideki's final round. I have watched Adam Scott's final round. I have watched Tiger's final round. And I also then watched John Rahm to be as up to date and as prepared as possible for this week of just pure fire. Mm-hmm. It, this week's going to be interesting as well, because like we've had the, the, the live the PGA thing for a while now. But this year feels even more kind of not confrontational but even weirder because you've now got even bigger players including last year's champion Mm -hmm, who are now on live you've got all the guys coming together again slightly weird with the masters because it's invite i mean Mm -hmm. you do get there's an automatic qualification kind of but everything is officially still like an invite there's like 41 different um uh, stipulations for what can get you in. Yeah, <laughs> it's like you finish top three in either this event, this event, or this event, and you also had Cheerios for breakfast on this day, <laughs> yeah. this day, and this day. Then you get in. The thing is, I don't know because obviously, if you're, for example, number one in the world, you know, ranking wise, you're going to be getting you're an in. Invite. But I don't know if there's a way that the Masters Committee can turn around and say, actually, no, don't want him, don't want him, yeah, because it is technically an invite. Yeah, so even if you have fulfilled one of those qualifications they can potentially still go well I, we don't want you that's the thing i don't know Ooh. i don't know this may require a little bit more research to look yeah. into i'm sure it's never actually kind of happened before oh, yeah. you know um you know the bib obviously uh, the bibs you get well you get the overalls don't you and, and the caddy the has a number suit. yeah the boiler yeah. suit and the caddy has the number how do you reckon it's like based on like how do you get the, like the number one sort of thing number two uh, number three do you know what i mean uh, are you do you know it? You, do you want to tell me? Uh, 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 well, you, you go for it. Let's do it in, let's do it in <laughs> synchronization. <laughs> Just go for it. Let's do it word by word. I'll do the first word, then you do the second word. And then I'll do the third one, you do the fourth one. Okay. No, let's not do no. that. <laughs> um, when you go to sign up yeah. to register that you're here to play the tournament, you are assigned a number based on what order you turned up in. Yeah. Oh, so if you, oh, was that? If oh, you right. rocked up, 3 a.m., super excited and for your first Masters. One. But one. Oh, However, okay. if you are a superstitious person or you're from a c- part of the world where it's culture that you don't like specific numbers, right? they will wait outside the door for, for what say numbers? they don't want 13. Yeah. They're like, cool, I'll wait for 13 people to go. I know I'm not going to get 13. Now I can go and register. Wow, I did not know that. Yeah, That's wild. It's just one of those things that make the masters yeah. magic. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. and you know, we spoke about last week about how obviously St. Andrews has gone all digital, which we know we had a bit of a rant about. Um, I like that, you know, there's still the, you know, <laughs> letter through, invitation through the letterbox. Do you know they're allowing phones on the course now? Oh, no, they're not. No, <laughs> no, you just not. see it go, yeah. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that, that, I mean, would, that I, be, would that be a big thing for you? Would that really tip you over? That's yeah. a tournament killer, that. Yeah, I mean, I am going to, you know, name drop 
location drop. I have I have been to August. I've been to the Masters before. Yeah. Do you remember when you cycled it. all the way down the country? As well? <laughs> <laughs> Separate trips. Yeah. <laughs> Separate things. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was amazing. One of the the things that really did stand out though is the fact that you couldn't have your phone. And it was a weird weird situation because we all got out of like the effectively a mini bus around the corner and we're like right okay so we can't take our phones in we didn't want to leave them in the lockers there and we're like well what do we do because we all had our phones yeah. yeah and the driver was like oh leave them with me i'll put them in the glove box mm. and we're like i don't yeah, I, don't the nobody like felt like comfortable with it at all and yeah. we left them in the glove box we walked away and i was checking my pockets Every few seconds, yeah. and I imagine heart dropping every now and then as well. Yeah, you like, think oh, I've not got it. Yeah. Oh, oh no, no, we're okay. Yeah. Which it's is like sad. Keys, wallet, yeah. and phone when you leave the house. Yeah, <laughs> you're it, like, yeah. <laughs> I can't feel it in my pocket. Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Luckily, my keys jangle on my. You keep your jump. keys on when you're swinging. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> on the on the topic of merch, we spoke about last week as well. Rough cut carabiners. Oh, <laughs> they are coming. There you go. Yeah, and they're they're in the shape of the O from the logo. There you go. And they've got the little green flag on them. And the flag is the bit that like clips. Oh in and out. God, don't. <laughs> okay. Um, speaking of merch, speaking what, was of merch. what was what was the favorite favorite thing that you bought while you're at Augusta? Um, because the shopping so at Augusta is wild. Yeah, part of the whole kind of masters experience is. And bear in mind, this is America and a lot of Americans' favorite pastime is shopping. <laughs> so they've got this incredible Masters Superstore is the only way I could describe it. It's got like proper wooden inbuilt queuing structures. Like you get at a theme park. Yeah, they're so prepared, aren't they? Which was wild to my mind. Um, the best thing I got from there was my Masters chair, which I'm very proud of. You've got a chair? Yeah, I've got a Masters chair, yeah. Well, I've, we've never seen. Have like you seen a, that? Like the fold out. I've fold never out seen chair. that. Oh, a fold out chair. The fold out chair. I literally thought you had like a slingback. Oh, yeah, that's what <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> Lazy boy. Yeah. I haven't. Where's that? <laughs> lazy boy. Shout out, shout out to oh, Lazy boy. I've never seen that. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry you haven't seen my fabric chair. Oh. Well, you know, I'll bring it in for you. So I you can, you you know, you can you have wanna... a sit. You can have a sit down on it. Yeah. Um, Chairs for the new podcast set. Yeah. That can be your chair. That can be your chair. That's a bit low. It's got a drinks holder. Um. I got that, which was necessary if you want to like uh -huh. claim your spot, yes. uh, which oh, we'll get so into. Oh, so you go and buy your chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. and of course. <laughs> I'm giving it to you for from, free. <laughs> apart, no, nothing for free. Apart from that, though, like I got some bits and bobs. I got a morgue. I got a hoodie. But I had to do the walk of shame when I was in the shop because I got a basket. And I was just going around and just chucking stuff in from the <laughs> shelves. Like, I had in there, and I know, this is when I really noticed it. I put some Masters coasters in. I put them in and I walked away and I'm like, I have never used, I do not <laughs> use. Here we go, a prime example if you're I, watching on YouTube. At home, I, I do not use a coaster. Mm -hmm. like, I never use a coaster. So I looked in there and I think, you know what, I've probably got in there about $900 worth of crap. Yeah, mm. things I definitely don't Tad. need. I was in the queue at this point as well. Oh. So I had to walk out of the queue, go back to the shelves. I'm putting stuff back. I don't need this jigsaw puzzle. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, putting it back. I, I think I spent about $400 yeah, in there. Yeah, I don't need this master's katana. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How good would that be? Probably the best thing we bought, um, we went back and we got a beach towel, which is in the, the office. Oh next yeah, door. that is cool. Because it was me, uh, Seb, uh, Seb on golf, uh, me and my golf boys, um, Andy and Piers, and we were vastly underprepared. Because when we went, it was actually quite cold. Mm. And we were like, we don't really want to go, but we're all wearing shorts. We don't want to go back and like buy some trousers. So we all got these beach towels and we like wore them like sarongs. <laughs> God, <laughs> 90s Beckham. Yeah, so we just like walking around the Masters with these like beach towel sarongs on. It's a wonder you've not been invited back. I uh, love that. It was a good look. Yes. It was a good look. I, I love that. I don't, know if, I don't know if you know much about this, people. I remember seeing something with um, Tony Finau's wife, who is quite active on TikTok. I remember last year she put something out about at each Masters event, they like sell a certain amount of like custom Scotties. Or like putters that are like mm. very specific to that year of the Masters, and there's only like a hundred of them. I mean, they're extortionate, but she went and got one, and they had one for like that year and stuff like that. But I mean, we must be talking thousands and thousands. Oh but can you imagine? Can you imagine? Have, yeah. can you imagine rolling up to Disbury with that in your bag. <laughs> yeah, like you've shanked one off the first. You've like two chipped to get anywhere near the green, and they're like. 
It's a cool looking putter cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. worry about that, mate. Don't worry about that. You can get of, it out. One of ten. I could three putt with something that costs that much. No, I could putt. We want three putt with anything. I yeah. Putt. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. We can all three putt with a massive <laughs> putt. If you got something that nice, though, would you actually use? There's I, no I, way I you can actually use that. You've got to stick it in a stick it in a case display. somewhere, haven't you? I yeah. also love that they. Um, like they charge would like the food like the the pimento cheese uh, sandwiches is like what two dollars or something like that. I, I love mean, the, I love this sort of thing. I love mm. that they don't over like they want you to be there. Yeah. I, I love that. That pimento cheese sandwich should cost twenty cents. <laughs> Trash. Co- first controversial uh, take of this week's podcast: pimento cheese sandwiches are rubbish. What do you mean rubbish? It's, it's ha- I, I often wonder really how you can take such a good thing as cheese and mess it up so badly. <laughs> Get, how do you get cheese so wrong? Like, honestly, I just, I we, I ate a few of them and I, I ate the first one and halfway through I was like, I'm not enjoying this. This doesn't taste that nice. So I had another one. <laughs> and then, <laughs> just, a, just a test. And I was like, it confirmed my bias. I was like, you know what? I could really do without pimento cheese sandwiches because it's got cheese, it's got different cheeses like onions and like mm-hmm. all kind of random stuff in there. But... Yeah, you have a fa- you have a favorite, yes. don't you? Oh tell my god, tell me. me. Yeah. On that point of the concessions, it is cheaper, which is fantastic. Like when you go to major championships at the moment, outside the Masters, it's a lot of the time an absolute disgusting mm-hmm. rip off. Well, the PGA Championship wasn't it not like twenty dollars for one beer, or something like that. Yeah, so I, 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 I bought a round of beers for us at the Open, and it was upwards of thirty quid for three beers. So like, yeah. it, it's just it's ridiculous. It, it, it's it's actually a li- I'm. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit older. I accept that, but mm-hmm. it, it's absolutely just disgusting that you could charge like twenty dollars for a a beer and a Budweiser as yeah. well, it's which is got, effectively dirty fizzy water. It's got no beer in it. It's like 05 percent, basically. Yeah, it's it's like, like one of those bottled. The pod, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> in one of those <laughs> like <just> bottled <laughs> can things. It's not even like a pint. Yeah, yeah. it's just on, yeah. it's just a rip off. Like it's like getting fans through the gate, and it's being like, right, we've got you here now. You can't go anywhere else. If you want a beer, obviously you don't have to drink a beer, but it's kind of like we're going to charge you this much. But everything else as well is super expensive. Mm-hmm. Like the open fish and chips, like eighteen quid <laughs> for a sorry sad haddock, which. <laughs> It's just desperate. It, it, it looks so so sad. It was probably waiting there to be caught. Like, catch me. I'm, yeah. I'm not <laughs> gonna, old. I'm haggard. I've done. I'm not, I'm not going to be spending 18, 18 quid on a fish and chips just for the halibut. Oh, it, and, and like the, the chips are micro. It, it's depressing. But, but at the Masters, it's not like, you're not like buying incredible like gourmet meals and they're cheap they're yeah. just like sandwiches they're, the teriyaki chicken uh, teriyaki pork one I had was really nice oh, oh that does sound good, good yeah. egg salad like was 150 yeah that's oh. that's great I love that perfect like the IPAs there I think it was like 350 oh, I want to say oh Brilliant. god you know get I mean? me on the plane but the thing is like everyone there and you could see that everyone was enjoying themselves mm-hmm, Every yeah. all the serving staff were really friendly really happy Every the whole vibe around it was so much better because you know you're not getting ripped off yeah. if you buy a Budweiser for $20 you know you're getting ripped off the people who are selling it you know that you're getting ripped off the organizer of the tournament sure they must know that you're they're ripping you off mm. yeah. it's all like a, it's just a bit horrible but yeah, the it masters, feels dirty doesn't it yeah it does mm. at the masters you feel clean yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> feel special um what is the course actually that nice? Because you know you see golf courses on TV and you're like, oh, that looks that looks pretty good. And then some people are like, yeah, who have been to it were like, well, that's rough on that day. Or you know, I you know there was bits that you didn't see that weren't. Is Augusta actually as nice as people say it is? Um, interesting question. Two point answer. It's absolutely pristine. It's the most perfect golf course you're ever going to see. Do, do you know how Adair Manor? Uh-huh. is practically perfect. There's not yeah, a blade yeah. of grass out of place. It looks shabby next to Augusta. Like the, the level of precision is that Really? Wow. wow. Oh, we're talking like with Augusta, if there's a patch of grass, which isn't right, they will spray paint it the right color. Mm. Like the, the, And with, this is the level of precision they go to. Everything's perfect. If it didn't have the crowds, and if it didn't have some of the grandstands, it kind of looks like a really beautiful park mm-hmm. is the best way I can describe it. Yeah. Especially the what, like 10, um, 11, 12, 13, they're in a league of their own as far as like how they look because they're in amongst the trees. They look really special. But a lot of the other holes are very wide open. And you just see like a beautiful white sand pit 
and a green bit. Mm. Like if, if there's no one there, we got in there really early one morning. It's just like a wide open, perfect park. Wow. I thought it was um, very interesting when you told me about, because it was the first time, obviously we went over to South Carolina and North Carolina uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you told me about the azaleas. Mm. Um, and that was the first time I've ever seen azaleas. Um, and you told me that the masters like, what do they do? Like they put like lights on them to bud them up or something like that. What, yeah, what do they do? I think it was the year Zach Johnson won it. It'd been like a particularly cold April and none of their flowers were coming out. Right. <laughs> so they got, to they got heat yeah. lamps and yeah. like everything on them to try and bring them out. They took his final round off of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Just no like, one likes him. This is unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Zach. You're, you're, you didn't come out well in full swing and we're taking it down. <laughs> <laughs> we had, what was it? Yeah, they had all those lights on and... It, uh, it's crazy, it, that. that it, 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 it's Don't just they a, freeze them? I heard that they freeze the azaleas. If they bloom, they freeze them and then bring them back out when they're when it's time for the tournament. Like a hibernate or something, like a hibernation Like Walt Disney. That, yeah. I've never heard of, oh, I've got Mr. Freeze going out. <laughs> yeah. Frozone comes in and yeah. just... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just shoots them all. It's time for you to chill. Yeah. That was my That was not too really. bad. Yeah. Is that what it was meant to be? Yeah. Oh, right, you're, not right. see, you're not saying Sorry, Mr. I thought, Freeze. I thought he was... No, I haven't. I thought oh he was gosh, trying to impersonate gosh. Frozone there. Oh, well, that's what I thought. Yeah. I thought you were trying to impersonate Frozone Oh, there. God, these I mean, young people. Honey, where is, is my it? super suit? Where is my <laughs> super suit? <laughs> which what, what which Batman about? was it? Forever? Batman, 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 Batman Forever. Batman Forever. Batman, have you watched Batman Forever? The older one. Yeah, no, with Mr. No. Freeze and Dr. No. Freeze and Ivy. No, no. Oh. So it is the worst film you'll ever watch. However, that does not mean you should not watch it. Yeah, all of Arnold's lines, he plays... Mr. Freeze. All of his lines are like ice puns. Every single, every single line. Every single. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, "You're skating on thin ice." <laughs> Time to cool off. Yeah, literally. Honestly, yeah. You, you'll never watch a film like it. Really? You need to Who chill. Is, is that is that Michael Keaton Batman? Or is that? Uh, no. I wonder if it's um, George Clooney Batman. Is it George, yeah, George Clooney Batman. Is it? It is, yeah, George Clooney Batman. Wow. I think it is, yeah. On, honestly, anyway, it's so bad. If you've got some time, watch all of the final rounds of the Masters, <laughs> and then and after <laughs> that, watch all of the old Batmans. <laughs> I've got a great idea. If there's a weather delay at the Masters, Batman, Batman forever. <laughs> okay. There you go. Um, I'll our, appreciate it. Yeah, it's really good. Do you think that we're going to have any near-death experiences at this year's Masters? Oh, God, oh, yeah. yeah. Last year. Oh. How bad was that? <laughs> I rewatched it. How bad was that? Because it, uh, it yeah. happens during, obviously, it's during yeah, yeah. Ram's win. And I watched some of the kind of, you know, highlights coverage. And it's on the highlights. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was a <laughs> giant tree nearly kills us. Massive right. pine trees are falling down. Yeah. Um, I think we'll try, we'll try to find the clip. It must be on social media somewhere. But obviously no one got hurt, but it was... Close. Close. Very, yeah. very close. That had completely gone out of my consciousness. I've forgotten about that. Like yeah. they, are, they are big trees. Mm. Very. Very, very big trees. Something else that they do at the Masters mm. about the pine trees. Mm. Have you seen this? When they plant new trees? No. So... What's the saying that um, a society grows great when... Old men plant trees, trees that they'll never they know they never... The shade whose shade they'll never sit in. Something like that. Yeah, they don't do that. Uh, a society what? grows great when old men plant trees whose shade they know they will never sit in. The thinker. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, I'm going to digest that after this. So, <laughs> write that down there. <laughs> <laughs> write that down there. Let me think about it. But what Augusta do break it down. is they just ship in fully grown trees. <laughs> right. Of course oh. they do. They just yeah. plant them. Yeah. Um, they ain't, they ain't got time to wait for them to grow. Yeah. No wonder they fall down. Yeah. 80 foot pines. Yeah. Because we'll I suppose they want got them the perfect height. How, of um, yeah. how do the roots grow deep? <laughs> Good. The trees not, not are doing it. Not doing the it. The trees are strong, my lord. Okay, let's do Their it. roots go deep. Tear them, them all, all down. Rip them all down. <laughs> We're all very excited. If there's a longer rain delay, watch Lord of the Rings. <laughs> One, two, and three. You'll actually have some understanding of what we talk about most of the time. <laughs> oh god, we need to quote Batman Forever way more often. No, I we do. We need to watch it more. So yeah, it's honestly, if if you ever get the chance to go. The, the cost of the ticket is obviously very expensive. Once you're in there, it's an amazing experience. Not having your phone is unusual. You can take it on the practice round, uh, which we didn't go to. We went to the tournament round. But if you get the chance, the whole atmosphere, it's it's magic. Yeah, it's it, magic. It, it does look phenomenal. And if you cannot go to the tournament, the only way really for you to experience it in the lead up to the tournament has been through social media. 
oh, which wow. is something that the masters are not known for is being up to date and down with the kids. Mm. Um, <laughs> that's, why, just, that's, why yeah. did, that's why I did the gun <laughs> fingers because we're, we're not we're kids. We're down with kids. Uh, Kieran's the only kid here. <laughs> um, and their social game in the lead up to this tournament has been leveled up oh, it's, dramatically. Yeah, it's, found, like, uh, it's gone from okay to like top, top draw. Like yeah. it's unbelievable, but um, just very sort of unmasters like I want to mm, say. Yeah. You know, like it's when I first watched it, one it was one of the like their promotion ones. I was like, wow. Um, Which counts this off again? Do <laughs> I do I like this or do I? Yeah, you know. And then I yeah I showed up my story. I was like, I think I like this. Yeah. You know, what I mean, so yeah, no, really, really cool, really, really good. So it shows they're sort of moving with the times. I don't know. Like I think like the past for me, like the past four years when they when they allowed Dude Perfect and Bryce and DeChambeau to do an any hit any object challenge or whatever it was, yeah. all, sports, all, sports all, all sports battle. When that happened, mm. I was like. That came yeah. from nowhere. Yeah. yeah, it was like, wow, they are really changing with the times. Yeah, if they're letting people do that, I mean, that was so random. But yeah, it was, and also like a complete one-off. They've not done anything since. Yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe the committee was like, oh, oh, right, we're not doing okay, that again. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. It was weird that they did start with like an all sports one though. That was the only weird bit, wasn't it? They yeah, just, it why even, wouldn't you just have done yeah, like an 18 hole actual golf? Well, yeah. <laughs> think about think about what doesn't happen when you're doing an all sports challenge. Well, yeah, I know, I know that. What doesn't happen? Play golf? Divots. Divots. Great show. Depends how bad you do. <laughs> this frisbee is really not working today. <laughs> Very sharp. <laughs> Very sharp frisbee. That's, in the that's true, though. I, yeah, I'll give you so, that. So we want to run around on your grass and throw frisbees. Much easier to sell than we want to play 18 holes. And there's five of us and we want to film it. And we want to make a lot of devots on your beautiful golf course just before the event just before the event yes. yeah yeah see him um, okay it is pristine though. i'll give you that but i think with like this uh, it, it does kind of strike me that someone in the committee at the masters has a green jacketed person mm. has gone around you know i, I hear the social media yeah. needs a bit of an upgrade <laughs> it's like well we can't do it because forrest we, gump we it's a green yeah, jacket yeah. <laughs> And we, have no <laughs> idea, like we have no idea what we're doing, so they probably got somebody in. And if you got that job, well, let's say, <sighs> let's say Finch Golf Media as a as a company, we got contracted. We got contracted to do <sighs> like the God. Masters Social. The reason it looks so cool, the reason it's kind of so amazing and different, is because imagine getting that job, you go mad. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. completely lose your mind on it. Mm. Like imagine the content you'd get. Yeah, yeah. God, yeah. they would have so many memes. Yeah, so I'm just uh, very interested. That's to why we didn't get it. Yeah. <laughs> there would be so many yeah, green, green screen memes for, in there. There yeah. would be, you know, Heisenberg standing up and looking at the sky, and then you'd see Faldo's two iron. I knew, I, I knew I was going to mention it, and I really didn't want to. <laughs> right? yeah. Well, if you didn't, Faldo would. So. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> is he a big Heisenberg guy? Is he? They're basically yeah. the same. Yeah. Faldo makes meth. <laughs> <laughs> That's take. definitely the chance, God. We're hot, not filming Faldo. Hot take. <laughs> is that what that farm is? <laughs> it's a meth farm. <laughs> uh, that is not the opinion of uh, the Rough Cut Golf Podcast. No, it's not. That is called... Um, Slander. 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 Slander, yeah, whatever. Libel. Um, so. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll beep it out. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we just won't include that. Uh, oh, uh, God, I'll, I'll, I'll have it on my Instagram. <laughs> I mean, one of, uh, one of the very best things about the Masters, in some respects, there are people who maybe would think differently about this, is if you do win a Masters, if you get a green jacket, uh, you can come back and play. So we have past champions such as Phil Mickelson coming back, who wouldn't yep. be in there otherwise. And we hope... Mr. Tiger Woods. Mm. He's on the he's, official website. Yeah, he's on the website. He's there. So fingers crossed that we'll actually get him to see. It. I think everyone now is in the moment where we just want to see him play. We just want to, if he doesn't make the cut, fine. But we just want to see him get around 36 mm. and not fall over. Well, do you remember last year? God, it was so hard to watch. Last year was. <laughs> it was so hard to watch. Yeah, that was, that was hard. It was like, what, I mean, it's never happened to me and thank God. You know, it's like watching the vet put down your dog. 
<laughs> Do you know what I mean? Oh, like, I love it, but this is really painful to, to, to view. It was the first, the first couple of rounds were good. And then, you, yeah, the okay, no, third round yeah, was... Uh, we'll move on. The third round was not particularly good, but the first round was good. Second round was okay. Was he, wasn't he over par on the first round? No, I thought he like did a respectable score. Like a what, level sort of one, in and around, you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. But, um, yeah. It, to, to me... Obviously, he's he's coming back every year, and he's not going to play if he doesn't think that he can't win. But I just see a guy who, of course, he's got to think like that, but he will not win. Yeah, bro, he's passed it. Yeah. He's passed it. I mean, you could never, ever, ever write him off because he is Tiger, and it is Augusta, and he knows the place like the back of his hand, but you have to say that, like I said, I just want to see him play. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Like it, I, I, I do. But I, I want to see him play, but it not be a bit, you're looking through your fingers a bit. I want to see him play as good as he can play and also look healthy doing it. Mm. Like say, like the last, I didn't enjoy watching him stumble around. It wasn't, it wasn't an enjoyable experience. It was horrible. However man. good he was hitting the ball, it just wasn't. So if he, if he comes back and plays, which it looks like he's going to, love it, can't wait. Make, makes the whole event, the whole tournament better for him just being there. Yeah, yeah. Adds more, adds more hype to it. Uh, but just be good. <laughs> just be, just be <laughs> healthy. I think we've all shouted that at a golf ball at yeah, one yeah, point yeah, in our yeah, lives, yeah. haven't yeah. we? So yeah, hopefully he'll, hopefully he'll play. Yeah, hopefully he'll yeah. be good. Yeah. Um, I agree. Have, uh, we'll have to throw this up by the way. Have you seen John Rahm's dinner? I have. And I, 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 I remember when he won. I'll get it. You could, it. Could have almost been my immediate thought. Probably wasn't, but I, th I think it was. That a Spanish man winning the Masters, just own, just the menu is going to be... Fire. Awesome. I, I, I think this will be classed as potentially the best ever... Uh, Do you think? Oh, really? Masters now, Champions so, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, was Hideki's. I, I, yeah, yeah, Hideki's that was, was strong. Exactly Fire. the one I was going to say. Wow. It obviously Unreal. depends on what you what you like. If you're not a sushi guy, if you're not that yeah. kind of thing, then obviously fair enough. But I agree. Hideki's, Hideki's was goat. really good. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone here really likes Japanese food. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, that how, does and, how, and how quickly we forget. But <laughs> I would say for a lot of people, this is just mm. unreal. We'll throw it up, but we got oh, just... Imagine everything good to come out of Spain. Mm. That's the it. Only, the only thing they don't have is a paella. They're eating Rafa Nadal. <laughs> you said everything good to come out of Spain. That doesn't make any sense. I, I, yeah, I, what about like... Um, <laughs> David Villa. <laughs> <laughs> David Villa? Well, he's yeah, a World he, Cup, well you know, he, he is, scored um, the goal to win the World Cup, didn't he? He is Spain's all-time leading goal scorer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Come anyway, on. I'm talking about food. Oh, <laughs> that's, mm, that's not what you said. But that's fine. David V is serving the food. That would be cool. Just kicking oh, it across imagine, the room. Imagine yeah. if he just got like all of his famous Spanish friends and they just were there. That was part of the to experience. Be the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, that'd be so. <laughs> I like that. What would you go? The menu. You talk the to menu. Me. I mean, we've got a lot of tapas to begin with: cured pork loin, bass chorizo, potato, mm -hmm. Mama Ram's classic lentil stew. Yeah, that yeah. sounds great. In my belly. As a tapas, though, how's that coming? In? I imagine this is going to be a little finger yeah, food, or is this going to be on? It's going to be small plates, isn't it? That, that stew, plates, stew will be a little bowl, okay, and then you'll. Great. Do you feel like this is being served to the table, or that's are we feeling like this is kind of canapé sort what, of what coming thinking. round? No, this, and is, this is served at the table, 100%. Okay. Oh, 100%. Okay. okay. I think with the first course, so we're all getting a bass crab salad. I'm happy with that. Great. Main course, Hold though. the salad. Skip, the, skip all of that. Main course, you've got a choice of Basque ribeye or turbot. Oh, turbot. Mm. 100%. And yeah, that's a fish for people at home if they don't know what turbot is. Yeah, I'm not a fish guy, so I'll I bet, go, I bet I'll they're go not uh, I'll spending steak. 18 pounds on that, are they? Uh, that will be more than 18. Yes. No, it's 18 <laughs> pounds in weight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one I'd go for. I would have to shut my eyes and go any, meeny, money, I think, because I would really struggle to pick between the two. What would you go for, Pete? Mm, I would go for the ribeye, I think, out of those two. Yeah, yeah I think right. right. And anything that has, and this has been scientifically shown, if you stick the name of like the region before it, you're more likely to buy it. Yeah, like Preston Pies. Yeah. <laughs> like you can have a pie Herif or a Preston it. pie. Oh, that, the Preston one's got heritage. Yeah, so you yeah. think, all oh, right, well, what is a Preston pie? It's no different than the other pie. Yeah. I'm just very biased about like ordering steak at a restaurant. Don't know. But you also eat fish. <clears throat> no, that's what I mean. Yeah, like like you can, 
Like you can cook a steak at home, whereas like uh, you can produce you can a beautiful cook, a, cook a turbo. Yeah, I know, but you can't produce in a in as good of caliber. We um, we had a long that discussion that, in that, Pinehurst. That, that doesn't make any sense. That to me. makes literally no That's sense. It's no sense. Yeah. Well, no, like you, you know. Okay, I, let, let, let me let me put this to you. Yeah. Let me let me throw this to you. You got yeah. some of the best chefs in the world serving this master's dinner. Are you going to go up to them and say? I think I could do a ribeye better than you, mate. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm not, so I'm not going to have that. <laughs> no, I know. Think, this is, this it, is what you've just done. This is what you've just done. If you've gone, I can make that at home. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you can make anything at home. I I'll can actually, make a bass crab salad. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just, not having I, either of those. I, I brought my mean. own lasagna. I know what you mean. You know what? Uh, sorry, Cancel sorry, sorry. the Masters <laughs> Champions <laughs> dinner. Oh, God. Because you can have all of this at home. Right. Cancel the tournament. Right. I can play golf at my yeah, own what? course. Why, why do this here when you can just go to Mama Ram's house and get a lentil stew there? You can make oh, that at home. God. In Kieran's defence, <laughs> <laughs> which I feel like he needs at this point. I don't know how we jumped on something so small. I'm going to fight your corner here. I think what I think what Kieran's point is is that for me anyway, there's more likelihood of you going to make a steak at home compared to getting a turbot in and cooking a turbot and all that. Like it's easier to go and get a steak and cook a steak and make a steak. But if you're going to go out and get a turbot and yeah, but this is my, also... this, this is my thinking is that like I can make a steak at home. I want someone who knows what they're doing yeah. to make the steak for me. It's, it's also and then I can then I also have like a bit of reference. I'll have a reference of, oh my God, this is so much better than the steak that I make. <laughs> yeah. I'm cool. Whereas if I, I'm only ever going to eat turbot there. Yeah. yeah, it's also because I, when I was doing my chef days, like I understood and got an understanding of how much steak costs. I thought for steak it's going to be like, oh, it's going to be really expensive. You know what I mean? But it's actually well cheap. Yeah. And the, and the, mar the markup on on what about a Basque ribeye? Uh, bear in mind they're not paying for these. No, I know, but like I just I don't know, just like the markup on it. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. Afterwards, they're handing out all the. Just imagine like Rob, I probably goes, uh, yeah, they can. Uh, it's a two quid up charge for Could the you, Basque ribeye. <laughs> I wonder on like when they get their invitations through, they get that, and it's almost like a wedding where you have to tick off if you're going to have the fish or the oh, meat, yeah, and then you get there so on the phone. No, I'm pretty sure I had the turbot. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, this, sorry, I'm, I'm supposed to have the turbot. <sighs> no, Mr. Yeah, Player, you had the ribeye. <laughs> no, you ticked. Sorry. By uh, uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Player, I think think we'll be right. Anyway, um, sorry I, for sorry. I, yes, I, yes, Mr. Faldo, I know you hit a two iron. <laughs> <on the, laughs> Could you have your server? <laughs> Which one do you want? <laughs> what was what was dessert? By the way, I didn't see dessert. Sorry uh, to go back it, on the menu. It was uh, like some uh, custard uh, oh, puff pastry. pastry cake. Oh, lovely! Custard and, custard and cream with a bit of pastry. I'll take yeah. that. Which, Not, sounds, which sounds really nice. I, I do. Uh, I know what you mean, though, Kieran. Like if I an Italian restaurant, I very rarely order pasta. Yeah. I can, yeah. Yeah, oh, no, I know. I say I always order pasta. That's because you're boring. Yeah. Sorry, I, yeah. <laughs> but I, I understand what you mean, even though you're entirely wrong. I'm entirely wrong. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, we're going to do our picks in a minute because that is one of the main reasons that we are gathered here today. <laughs> However, I think aside from who we're going to try and pick, because you won't be able to have everyone, um, I'd like to just get a little bit of a, a barometer on who we think is going to win the tournament. Can I add a caveat? Yes. Can we say anyone apart from Scotty? <laughs> yeah. No one's going to win apart from Scotty. What's it when... No, um, what I, mean, I uh, think that caveat is important. Yeah, I think everyone... Because we hit. could easily go. Okay, so yeah. everyone name Scotty and then name the person you think is going to win Got if he it, injures yeah. out. It's, yeah. like, it's like when Lewis Hamilton was like at the top when you were betting on the F1, it was like, win without Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, think it's like, I think it's like Max now. Who's next best? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like Max yeah, now. Max yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, Max yeah. now. Yeah. I've seen things of people like just basically tape over the number one spot on the telly. So it just like gets rid of the name of Max and just everything <laughs> behind like that. that is just... That's <laughs> great. That's smart. Yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. Um, who's gonna win? Yeah. Well, do, do you want me to? Do you want me to pull my stats out again? Is that what? Is that no, what yeah. we're doing? No, here? Yeah. No, no, yeah. Save it. We need to do the intro. For that. Who do you? Okay. Who do you? Who do you think is gonna win? And then we'll intro. We'll go round, and then we'll intro you telling us who's gonna win. But I don't want to say because then. Okay. Oh, well, well, you, go last, last, and then, you yeah. go last. You go last. Okay. Go last. Right. Okay. Shall I start? Go. Um, I think that. Scottish Scheffler's going to win. And then the person who isn't Scottish Scheffler who's going to win is someone who's been in a lot of form, someone who we haven't necessarily been seeing a lot of because he plays on a different tour, Joaquin Neiman. Wow. Interesting. I think Neiman's coming into some gnarly form. And I think, I think everyone else is after Scotty. 
going to be chasing him. I uh, concur. I think he will be a contender as well. Just because he's he's playing great golf, but he's also got like a massive chip on his shoulder. Yeah, he's going to be, yeah. The, like, ma- the amount of commitment he went through in the last like six months away from Liv to go and play a load of like weird other tour events so yeah, that he yeah. could get enough points to qualify so that they'd invite him yeah. is that tells you he, he's got a screw loose. You, you can tell he's got a chip on his shoulder because he went away. He managed to play enough that uh, Augusta invited him. And even after he was invited, he was still complaining about the fact that he was invited in the way that he'd been invited. <laughs> It was like, you could see he's just like, this year he's got like a massive live chip. And oh. he's just like, he wants to like he annihhilate wants, everybody. He's out for blood. He cannot wait. Thank you. Uh, so you're saying Joaquim as well? No. Oh, okay. uh, I'm going to go for Rory McIlroy this year. Mm. Uh, I've said it the last couple of years. It's not, not done well. <laughs> <laughs> this year, this year, uh, yeah, I think he's going to do it. I think, again, he's kind of got a mini chip on his shoulder. You know, I think this year he's going to... Blow it. Is he, does that I mean, mean he's, he's going to just blow out the water and just... Does that mean he's solved this hook problem and he's not trying to hit this stupid fade yeah. that he can't control? And mm. He's yeah. solved all that, has he, in the he's last so, two weeks? He's solved all that. Yeah. Yeah, Since the players, he's just a new man. That's all done, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, he's had a <laughs> bit of time off. <laughs> massive hook and a feed he can't play. He's only the number two golfer in the world there. Well, that's the reason he fell apart the players, because yeah. he, he was struggling with the hook and then instead of trying to get rid of it, he tried to hit a fade and he can't hit a fade. Yeah, yeah. but obviously... Uh, he's got <laughs> Uh, well done, so I will say Scott Scheffler is obviously going to win. <laughs> it, have you seen the odds on Scott Scheffler, by the way? It's, it's practically even. They're like, just take your money back. Just take your money back. That, that really hasn't happened since Tiger, by the way. It just shows how well he's striking it and all of a sudden he can put. So I think everyone's kind of pretty much in on Scotty. I will say this now, and I very rarely agree with Kieran, and this is so much based on what I want to happen in life. And as we all know, that never usually goes that way. I really, really want Roy to win. I'm absolutely desperate for him to win this time because it's been the promise for so long, but it's kind of reached the point now where it needs to happen this year, next year, or it's just not going to happen at all. Yeah, I I agree. And if he wins one, we expect a little bit of a kick on. Yeah. If I'm not thinking with my heart, I think, no, I'm going to go Rory. I'm going to stick with it. Okay, so I'm I'm in the same camp as you when it comes to... hate Rory? I don't hate Rory. <laughs> Where does that come from? I only hate Scheffler's feet. Because he it. can't control his fade and he hooks everyone. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying that he's got a couple of golf-related issues that he might need to resolve before he takes them to Augusta. However, I'm in the same camp as you. I really, really want Rory to win. Mm. I just, that's not the question that I was answering. Who do I want to win? Rory McIlroy or Tommy Fleetwood? Yeah. Mm. Who do I think is going to win? Yeah, fair enough. The people who are in form. Are you, um, Wyndham Clark. <laughs> yeah. Wyndham Clark. Joaquin Neiman. Mm, I don't think Wyndham yeah. will win this. Yeah, I didn't think. Yeah. It, um, it doesn't seem to be his course. But. Um, are you going to do another uh, Fleetwood get a tattoo if Fleetwood and wins the major I, this I, year? I'll do it at the Open. At the Open. I just oh, what you're only, is that not carrying you're on? only limiting yourself to that one event. If Fleetwood wins a major this year, I will get a Tommy Fleetwood tattoo. Wonderful. <laughs> All right. Tommy, if you're listening. <laughs> okay. Come on, Tommy. Tommy, if you're listening, we'll clip this and we'll tag you in it. You get to select what it is. <laughs> and <Yes>. where. <laughs> Your face. Vic's chest. <laughs> 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 like a full-on Colin McGregor style one, just Fleetwood's face. <laughs> with his, with Fleetwood. his hair like splaying out behind him like a mane. <laughs> like over your shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine going you have to his hair like tattooed down your back. Yeah. Oh my oh, god. That's, imagine going to a swimming pool on holiday. Be like, what's that? The guy's got the guy's got some tattoo. He's got, he's got a Tommy Fleetwood tattoo Tommy Fleetwood Fleetwood on that guy's chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right. Okay. So we're we're gonna get on now to uh, Jacob's picks. Now a little bit of background here. A little bit of background. The last major of last year, the Open Championship at Royal Liverpool. Jacob made his picks, and one of those picks was a certain Mr. Brian Harmon, who, of course, went on to win and become champion golfer of the year. I was doing media work that week, and I absolutely shamelessly plugged Brian Harmon from the very start, and I made it such... The thing is, I was plugging him so hard for for literally this reason, because Jacob picked him, and it just so happened that that's the first time where I've plugged someone like from the outside to win. Yeah. And everyone kept coming back to me saying, 
You pig, Brian Armand, the start of the week, didn't you? <laughs> well, do you remember uh, seeing the bet slips that people were putting oh, yeah. on? Yeah, it was like, oh, yeah, we've got him, we've got him, we've got oh him. Oh, my God, at the end of the tournament, people were tagging us and being like, With oh, the- my God, Pete won me, like, yeah. five grand. Yeah. Pete won me, like, 800 quid. And you're like, why did you listen to this, Lemon? <laughs> I, I got so many messages on Instagram as well. Yeah. I bet yeah. slips come through. Yeah. Like, I think the highest amount that someone sent through, they'd won, like, eight grand or something oh. ridiculous. I couldn't oh, believe it. Yeah. Okay, so what was he like two one hundred and fifty or something, something like that? Something like that. Yeah, one fifty, one seventy five. He was. He was. He was I mean, I, I did win as well, yeah. but not quite as much as that. <laughs> okay, so everyone, get your betting um, app out. Get ready to write down whoever Jacob says now. And then, of course, if you want to have a bet, that's completely yes. your decision. And if you are struggling with gambling, yes. help is available, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want eight grand. <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the fun stops, stop. stop. <laughs> when the fun stops, stops. I've literally spent 200 quid on bets for the last <laughs> I know. Guys, yeah. Yeah. We'll, talk about who who, we'll talk about who you've put on oh like after God. Jacob tells I us who you should have put on. so rich. <laughs> Are we good? Are we yeah, ready? Yeah, Are we we're ready. I am going to tell you. We're a bit giddy. Who is going to win the Masters this year. And I'm, I'm quite excited about this year, to be honest. Um, I think this was the point where I was kind of getting on the Patrick Cantley bandwagon of last year, which didn't really go very well. So we'll see how that goes. But if you haven't watched it before, <clears throat> I kind of use a lot of data, a lot of stats to kind of build a, a guy who's going to win the Masters every major of this year. And one of the big things that comes out of the Masters is that for the last 10, the winner has come from inside the top 25. Now, World rankings are a little bit sniffy at the minute, a little bit, where should people be? So I've used Data Golf to give me the top 25 regarding of like how well they're doing right now. So taking all those 25 names, the next thing I wanted to look at was that in the last 11 winners, the previous nine have won in their last six starts before the event, which snuff it, completely knocks loads of people That's out. That's loads of people out. The people remaining, Scotty Scheffler, obviously won twice already. Rory McIlroy snuck in with his win at the Desert Classic. Mm. Neiman on Live has won twice. Uh, Wyndham Clark has also won. Uh, I think it's Pebble. Mm. And Hideki at Riviera for the Genesis. That's your six. We're down to. Wow. It's a list. Yeah, the a next list. steamed is steamed list. Yeah. We're talking previous major winners there. Uh, next one to knock us off. 14 of the last 15 winners have all come inside the top 50 for driving distance, which is an important thing to note is you don't have to be super long, but you do have to, you do have to get it out there. Be long enough. Be long enough. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And this was what was very interesting to me. So as you'd imagine, Roy McIlroy makes it through second on the PGA Tour. Wyndham Clark, also notoriously long, 17th on the PGA Tour. Joaquin Neiman also makes his way through. He is second on Live, which would also place him third on the PGA Tour. He's, wow. he, he's, he's a long, long boy. He's long. 314.7 yards, I think it got is. got that dip gun, you know. Yeah, yeah. he's got that turn. Yeah. For context, Scottish Sheffer is 108th in driver distance. Now, if he puts well, he's going to probably win. And he also hits every fairway, so it doesn't really matter. But I just thought that was quite interesting. That yeah, he's, he's ridiculously low down for someone who you think is I thought he long. was longer than that, but maybe that's just my mind. I just think he's great at everything. Yeah. So. <laughs> So here we go. We're down into the final three players. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just whoa, cut whoa. out. Just, 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 just pump the brakes a second. Have you just ditched Scotty Scheffler? He's gone, yeah. He's gone. Where was Hideki? He's, he doesn't make the top oh, 50 either. Right, yeah, done it right, far gone. enough. We're into Rory, we're into Neiman, we're into Clark. That's all you've got left. So here we go. We're good at this, by the way, because our predictions are turning out statistically yeah, correct. Yeah. He did just say that um, Clark wasn't going to win. You said that. So did he. <laughs> <laughs> Continue. Last 11 winners of the Masters have all gained 0.25 strokes on the field when it comes to around the green. Now, approach play is also incredibly important, but with these guys, I've kind of tried to take both and put them together and also see if it snuffs anyone out. Now, with the, with the stat that I've just referenced there about strokes around the green, it remains one person who at the moment, has a 0.6 strokes gained average, which would put him in the top five on the PGA Tour. Now, that might give away who I think this is going to be. The winner of the Masters this year is going to be not only mine, but clearly mixed choice of Joachim Neiman. Wow. And there you have it. There we go. I don't want to just settle on that because I feel like there obviously are some things that are going to come in out of play. You know, 
talking about the approach play, he's 75% uh, greens in reg percentage on live this year. I think he sits second in the, in the whole field. He has won around Riviera in 2022, which is notoriously known as a good comp between Augusta and Riviera. He is playing as of the level that he was in that 2022 season. And his approach play, I think, is 19th in if you put it into the field now of what the PGA Tour is like. So I think everything, he's won twice. He's trending great. You say that chip on his shoulder. He fits the course well. I have a good feeling about him. And that's the end of my winner's point. Now, I just want to, this is a slight tangent of just, if you want... An addendum. Addendum. I have an outside pick this year who I I don't think it's going to be crazy odds. It's not a Harmon, but I do really, really like Shane Lowry this year. I think Shane Lowry, the only things that he wasn't really falling into was the fact that he hasn't won in his last six starts. Now, if you read his last four finishes, it's T29, T19, third and fourth, trending in a good direction. He is third on the PGA Tour in approach play this year. He's he's gaining 0.928 strokes on the field in approach play. So if you want a little outside one, you're probably going to be getting him to 40, 50 to one, maybe a bit less. Mm. But that's what I that's what I like this year. And wow. there you have it. There we go. Good Lord. That was excellent, Jacob. Whew. Thank you. Um, and if, if you if you uh, like a, like you said, um, gambling is not for everyone. If you don't want to, don't gamble. And obviously do it safely and responsibly as, as best you can. If you're going to put a bet on and you take one of those two guys and they win, please let us know because yeah, we'd love do. to hear how successful Jacob has been because he's on a heater at the moment. I've, he's, on I've, a, he's on a streak of one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's on a on. Uh, I mean, I put on, uh, I put on for Wacky. Mm. He's one of my bets. You've also so. put on a rather large bet for someone else. <laughs> so... Prepare yourselves. This is the Peter Finch pick. Oh, God. Each way. Yeah. <laughs> a certain Mr. Nick Taylor. Now, for somebody who puts as well as him, for someone who's won this year mm-hmm. already, he was at, I think when we got him, about 200 to 1 each way. Yeah. Oh, no, my phone's heard, I can have a look. I think it's about that, yeah. And admittedly, admittedly, we were in the bar at an airport when this bet was placed. <laughs> he was third at the players, I think. He was third at the players, and I was like, <laughs> get it on. Love pod. So yeah, 50 quid? 50 yeah, 25 pounds each way, so yeah, 50 yeah. quid, yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, four grand if he comes in. Yeah. Oh my God, it, just a legend. It, like, it's a funny one, because like say, with, with the top 25 that I've taken, obviously you can make arguments of which way I should have gone about it, but I feel like last year when I was doing it, I didn't, allow the live guys enough credit of yeah. being involved and we kind of seen you know they can come over brooks example phil last year they will perform he's gone so, to he's gone to 125 to well, there you go getting shorter yeah, nick taylor because yeah. nick taylor. Nick taylor. he's an absolute legend what app are you looking at are you looking at um, odds check or something uh golf odds.com nick um golf nick taylor is 25th in the world so if you want to take the official golf world rankings, he does meet the metric of being inside the top 25 mm. Heard it as here. well. Heard it here oh, first, yeah. do you want, Nick Taylor. Do you want me to tell you what his last results were in last season? Don't need to. It's a new majors. year. It's a new year. New, he's a new man. <laughs> but you, you, before we came on air, you were saying, oh, it's all about last year's picks. And stuff like this. You, right. No, no I, I, I was saying that going past that point, is kind of fruitless because we were talking about basically current form. So, all right. Well, he missed every single cut <laughs> last year. <laughs> on the he's, to get <laughs> he's also won twice in the time period uh, since those majors in two playoffs. Okay, the, the boy one's, has got ones with massive melons. His okay. ones with um, Fleetwood. You can you can argue your you can argue your winners um, till the cows come home. You do your random stuff. Yes. But first of all, um, before we start arguing over who's going to win it, we're going to we're going to do what we came here to do, which is to make our major picks and predictions for the year. So we're going to do a snake draft like we did last year. But um, there was a little bit of an argument about whether because I lost, I should get to pick first because you won. You should get to pick first. So we're going to go random on the first pick and we'll do a random order. And then that will be the snake order. Mm. It's time for the draft picks. Um, so Peter Finch, explain how the game works, and then we'll go through who we're going to get, who we're going to pick. So 
this is the same format as last year. We have four major championships happening in 2024. Pretty much the same as every year. <laughs> we are going to be picking four players to be on our team. Three of those players can be whoever that we want them to be. One player has to be outside the top 50 in the official World Golf rankings. Now, if a player makes the cut at a major, the position that he finishes, so 10th, you will get awarded 10 points. It's the player out of us with the lowest score at the end of the year will become champion. If a player misses a major or misses the cut, you get awarded the points of the amount of players in the field that have also missed the cut. Does all that make sense? Yes. And Excellently if explained. If you want to change as well, if you want to change players. No changes this year. No, you <laughs> no. Oh, come on. Come on. Um, if you want to make a transfer, you can do so, but you must do it at the cost of the next major's amount of people who missed the cut. Yes, correct. Uh, this really did scupper uh, Kieran last year. Well, no, I was, was, I was, I was it cost me the most. I, I, the Open cost yeah, me. Because you didn't change. Literally. No, wait, I, I, didn't, I changed too late. That was my problem. <laughs> yeah, the, the Open cost me last year. I was winning after Masters, PGA... And then the US, and then I had three people miss the cut, and I lost. I'd, I'd, I'd have called an official adjudication if you don't want. Okay, so <laughs> let's. I'll, I'll go through what happened last year. Um, last God, year, really secretive over here. Last year, Francesco and Finch. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh God! Yeah, let me down last year. <laughs> Francesco. <laughs> Let's not mention his name. Yeah, um, yeah. Francesco and Finch. Birdies for Broadbridge. Four Americans in a bed. Um, <laughs> that was mine. That was yours. Yeah. I was called Im Morikawa. Yeah. Um, you are oh, going to have to name your team, so come up with a team name. Okay. Oh, um, wow. um, best performing last year. Um, so based on how many majors they played and their total amount of points, I then produced an average for last year's performance. Scheffler, 9.5 average Brilliant. over four majors. Beast, yeah. Absolute beast. Ho Hovland, 10.3. <laughs> Rahm, 15.8. McElroy, 17. That's the top four. Hmm. The bottom four, Molinari, 74.3. <laughs> it's not going to go top. Oh, dear. It's not going to go top. That won't do it for you. McIntyre, he only played two majors. Oh, and he was still better than... 64. Well, he was better than Molinari. Wow. And he only played in two majors. That's how stinky that was. <laughs> oh, no. That was such a stinky pick. Lowry, who you subbed in. Yeah, yeah, he was good. Wasn't he it? was what? third last. What? He played three majors mm. and he got 56.3 points. Really? Yeah, he had 169 he in total. He, I, think the, I think the Open done him. I thought he did all right. Masters, he came 39th. And then Sam Burns... Uh, very close to Lowry, 53.3. Yeah, he played like, all four majors. Again. He had a total of 213 points, which is woeful. Mm. That's a bit smelly. <laughs> right, let's do the random. Okay, so we're going to do a random pick each round. So Can you just screen record that, please? I'm going to, yes, I'm going to screen record just, that. Just one more thing that has been thingy. The picks, we have three that we can make. One of the players has to be outside the top 50. He did say that. Oh, he did. Yeah, he did yeah. I apologise. Yeah. Okay, it's excellent. Fine. I was in my own world. Don't, don't right. worry about it. That's right. right. It's okay that you're not listening. That's I was fine. trying to think because my laptop's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want me to get your charge? No, it's fine, because it'll take... It's fine. <laughs> well, well, let's let's I can't compute. <laughs> okay, I'm screen recording here. I'm going to tap this button, and this is going to tell us who is going to pick first. Okay. okay. Are we ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, da, 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 let's da, da, da. go. It's come spinning. On, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want, I want to get Brooks off, Kieran. Oh, and God. it is going to end on Mick Warwick. That is me. Hey, this is an absolute rig. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You knew exactly. You've done that three times. This is a rig. I tested it once. This is... Oh, who was first? <laughs> <laughs> who was first? Do you want me to do the one that I tested uh, it? Or do you want fine. me to do the one that I just did live and recorded on the podcast? Who was first? <laughs> just tell me. <laughs> it was wasn't it? you. Mick's oh. first. <laughs> Mick is first. Um, so I'll be taking first pick. Second pick. I've got to remove myself, haven't I? Yes, you do. So that I don't come up again. <laughs> I also get second pick. <laughs> and the third. And you, should now. Be, you should be able to remove it after every spin. I have done. But like it should Ooh. give you the option. Go, go, go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unlucky, mate. Peter. Oh, Peter Peter this Finch is just second. Delicious. <laughs> yeah, on that bottom bit, it, you can click remove. It will save you a job. That's right. I've, I've already started. I'll start it off in it. I'll start it off. <laughs> right. So we, we just have Kieran or Jacob left. Do you know what? Wait, this I, is going the way of. The I, I, want, I don't want to be picked for this one. If this. If this gets Kieran, then it's just the flip of last year. And it's also that way around the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I pressed it. Here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Uh, and it I'm is going to be oh, Kieran Mulhall. Oh, no. 
<laughs> we all literally go this way yeah, around the same. Yeah. It's, and it's in the order of... It's the, making, the, it's it's yeah. making yeah. life... Me, Kieran, you, Mick. That's <gasps> making life very, very just easy. That's true. So Should we just like cut the podcast <laughs> and we say, oh, we're just going to flip it around? <laughs> well, yeah, we, say, we literally gave the two options and they both turned out exactly how they would have turned out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, let's do it. Uh, oh, random. For God's sake. Well, at least it was done randomly on the... Yeah. And we've got the screen recording of it now also. Um, so before we get into it, um, and I'm sure people could Google this if they really wanted to, which they probably should to get, get their research in as well. Yeah, why not? Tell us the four majors in order and the courses that are going to be at this year. Okay, so the Masters, as always, is going to be played at Augusta National. We are then followed by the US PGA at Valhalla. The US Open moves to Pinehurst, whilst the British Open, also known as the Open in these aisles, is at Royal True. Your, your favourite Open course? It is my favourite Open course. And you will also be playing in it so that's really that's good. great for you yeah. yeah so i've picked my first pick is no i'm kidding it's not <laughs> it's peter Fitch. now we did have a rule last year that the first name you said is the is the guy is the pick because I, yeah. and if we can this might make a bit of work for kieran but if we can play the controversial bit from last year <laughs> where peter made his selection and then immediately backtracked jacob had the choice because he was next to tell pete he had to take the person that he said first so the rule is the first name that you say mm -hmm. Is the name that's going down on your sheet? And I helped okay. you, so you're welcome. Unless you don't remember, you said Ram. You remember that at all. No, you said McIlroy, then you changed to Ram. No, no, doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's last year. Yeah. Are we ready, Mick? We are. I'm just remaking this so that I can put people, so I can put the oh, players' the names as, in as we go. Lovely. Okay. Um, you can lead us off. I am. I'm going to. Now, I wonder who you're going to. Now. Be. It's not a difficult decision, is it, to make the first pick of, really. of this. Um, however, we have also had a discussion about how there are kind of maybe four or five major winners available to you in this first round. Probably all of them are going to be gone. So straight out of the gate, although I hate his swing and I feel like he's quite boring, he's probably going to finish high in all the majors. So my and win them. <laughs> and win probably all of them. It's just because of the randomness of the phone that I have the honour of selecting Scotty Scheffler. Can't can't argue with that. Yeah, I can't argue with that. Absolutely yeah. fine. Um, so I hmm, I'm going to pick again a former major champion, but he's not won one in a while. However, what he always does is literally finish in the top ten. So my selection, my first player, my captain, Mr. Rory McIlroy. <gasps> okay. Mm, it's a choice. Well done. That was very good. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's who you uh, maybe uh, wanted. Uh, no, that's right. In my, so I, I bracketed. So for each round, I know I've got my f five players in which I'm going to pick. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go for uh, last year. He, is, he came first in the Masters. Uh, T fiftieth in the PGA, T ten in the US Open, T two in the Open. John Rahm. Wow, strong starts. We've gone, we've gone down the top three in the world. I thought he was going to slip to me. Oh, you thought you were going? Oh go my I did. God, don't say someone's name because I'll take it. Right, Jacob, it's up to you. Mm. The top three have gone. Um, yeah. Make a smart choice. I. I think I'm going to go for the guy who I thought Kieran was going to go for. And I'm going to go for Brooks Kepka <laughs> as my first pick. <laughs> he hates it. He, look at his face. Brooks, he's gone. <laughs> look at his face. He hates it. Wow. That he's, is hard. You thought he was going to go second round, didn't you? Now, the only thing that that does compared to last year is that you could pick him as a top outside the top 50, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Whereas he is 31st in the world. Yeah, because he's won Because he won on the BGA, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's fine. So that, that, that's the only little thing. But I'm happy with him on my team. Solid performer. Always does well in the majors. Major and I hope he'll do the same for me. Wow. My second pick, as we are in this snake draft, I'm going to go for a guy who I had last year, who I'm hoping is going to continue what he did for me last year as well and potentially win his first major of the year of his career. And I'm going to go for Victor Hofland. 
Yeah, that's, God, that's, that's real smelly, that. Don't like that one bit. He's having a bit of a struggle at the moment. Well, I'm fine. Um, so my next pick is from Bracket 2. I'm just going to go but the man. No worries. Uh, I'm going to go for someone that just smells and pisses <laughs> consistently. <laughs> We've said piss a lot of times on this podcast. Uh, last year, he came T10, T18, T10, T18. Now, if he goes in order, he's going to get T10 at the Masters. Xander Shoffley. Very good. Here's my second pick. In a, good, in a bit of form as well. Xander Shoffley. You know what? I didn't actually see him going that early. No. No. He's, made, he's in my bracket too. Uh, Interesting. Wasn't, wasn't even on the radar, no. unfortunately. Peter Finch. Pick two. So, I am going to continue the theme of power hitting. And I'm actually surprised that he hasn't gone yet so far because he won a major last year. He's won a game this year. He almost won the players. Mr. Wyndham Clark. Solid. Yeah. Yep. Respectable. Really respectable. Okay. So I've, I've, I've come to the point of the, of the picking where I expected those Apart from Shoffley, maybe <laughs> I expected the top, those six to be out the door and gone. So I was expecting that. Um, I didn't think I was going to get Scheffler, which I'm really, really happy about that. I have got him. Um, okay, so it's it's a tricky question to answer, but I think I'm going to go for someone outside of the top fifty early because I want to mm -hmm. snap them up real soon. I, I think it's a good idea. I'm going to go for. Jacob's prediction <laughs> and my yeah. prediction also, Joaquin Neiman. Yeah, 81st in the world was my number one ranked outside 50. Yeah, yeah so. he's in there as well. It's okay though. Uh, there's, there's someone else who I'd, I'm pretty happy to get. So. Um, and then second of my, uh, my third, we're in the third round now. Third round, I'm going to go real horrible. <laughs> real stinky. You ain't going to like it. Go on. Patrick Cantley. I love it. <laughs> no, I love it. You're very good. You're sowing disharmony within your team. I oh, know they all hate each other. There we go. Wow. Okay. So, Pete Finch, pick number three. I think pick number three is maybe the trickiest one. It's hard. I have three potentials that no one has taken yet. Mm -hmm. I've got three of them. I'm going to go for someone who before he got injured, could literally oh my God. not finish Kieran outside is, the top five in a Kieran is going to hate you. You've ruined his year. Like I had oh. Player Should number three in my team, Mr. Will Zalatoris. Wow. Oh God, what is going on? That is a, that's a real commitment <laughs> that he's not getting injured again. Going on? Wow. Yeah, you're going to say, hope his back doesn't give out halfway through the Masters first round. <laughs> but he, you're right, his... Yeah, his finishes in majors are Unreal. very impressive. Yeah, and that was before he could put. Yeah, yeah. Is um, it? I had it written down. I've just deleted it now. I'm few, so sorry. Few of. Um, I mean, I'm not that sorry. But. Um, it was T two, T six, T twenty eight in 2022. Yeah, and a cut. Year, year before that, second, eighth, then a cut, and then had a withdraw. Year before that, T six in the U.S. Open. Um, cool, Will. Right. <laughs> Come on, Zala. Uh, so, I'm going to... You've done him there. Yeah, I'm going to go for um, a previous Masters winner. Um, did all right in the majors last year, but coming into a little bit of form this year. Uh, last year, he came T16, T29, T32, T13, Hideki Matsuyama. Yeah, I like that pick. Damn yeah. you. It's, quite, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Because, like... Even when he finishes, like if he finishes T30, that's not too bad. No, it's not mm. too bad. It's just him finishing T30 looks like he finishes like 140th. God, mm -hmm. I don't like that one. I, I, I really, I, really I, wanted him. I really, really wanted him. You're not happy, are you? Brooks got taken away and it's all down there. Listen, Brooks you've got, Will got listen, smashed away. you've got Ram, Shoffley and Matsuyama. That yeah. is a team. It's not who he wants. That's wanted. the thing. It's the, it's, it, you should have well, gone Brooks then, shouldn't you? So I'm I'm finishing my team now. You I'm, I'm going you back are, to back. Yeah, you're pick mm. three and then you're whoever your wildcard is. Now I've got two names left on my inside top 50 that I... One is 
head won his heart. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I think I, was, yeah. I think I was stuck in this predicament last time. You were. And I think I'm going to do what I did last year as well and not go with my heart. Oh, God, that's horrible. Because I also want to have a guy, and this is, this, is a, this is also a little bit of a heart pick as well, to be fair. He's never played a major. But I want Aubert in my team. Oh, Very good. I want him in my team. He was next on my list. He's going to dominate. And as you can imagine, Tommy Fleetwood was <laughs> potentially there. But He did just say Tommy Fleetwood, but he is outside of the top 50, so you can't have him. That's correct. <laughs> All right. So my outside top 50 pick, as I mentioned, the Live Tour has come in and allowed players to go quite low into the rankings. With that being the case, I am selecting Cameron Smith. I reckon Pete had him. He was my boy last year. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a bit lazy, though. I watched him live. <laughs> oh, right, okay. I, wa- was, I, I watched like him live. Like that last year. I watched was... him live the other day. Um, honestly, doesn't seem like he cares. Mm. Just like Brooks. No, Brooks looks like he wants to win. He wants to take everyone's heads off. No, that's just so that's wrong. Just, that's his angry, I yeah, don't want to be there first. Because he's mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so Jacob has completed his team. Mm-hmm. Um, Kieran Mulhall, you are next. Uh, yeah. Um, I was potentially going to say the person that Jacob just said, <laughs> um, uh, but I'm not. I'm going to go for Dustin Johnson. Oh, it's a good one. Yeah, he was on the list, ranked 316th <laughs> in the world. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. With Dustin, is it got to the point where he's not guaranteed every major? By the way, he still is because he won the he won the Masters in 2020. Right, okay. So he's so got two years He's through. probably not got long. So yeah. he needs to get his own It's the same as Bryson, isn't it? Like he's yeah. starting to not get invited to yeah. things in like a year's time. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not long. Oh dear. Okay. Um, right, Peter Finch, your, your, your final pick. This person has to be outside of the top 50 in the world. Your team's looking strong. Who are you gonna, who are you gonna be finishing it off with? So I didn't notice this guy until quite late. And... To be honest with you, I am rooting for this man more than I could ever put into words. <laughs> you are looking at the number one member of his fan club. You are looking at someone who printed T-shirts at the Ryder Cup last year where he wasn't picked despite being one of the most consistent, Ooh. best golfers in the world. Newly minted at Live, so he slipped his rankings. Mr. Adrian Moronk. The big Polish man. I did have him last year. He was all right. He was okay. The Moronka dog. Is he definitely in the field? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, is he? He's in the field? I will definitely double check. <laughs> Can you please check that? Yeah, he is. There he is. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the Lord. Look at him. He's even smiling in the photo. He knew. He knew. Oh, Adrian. Look, he's so tall. My boy. I'll tell you what. Oh my God, he's gonna win! I'm fairly, I'm he's fairly sure. All. I'm fairly sure when I picked Moronk last year, he was li- it was the same kind of vibe where he was like 51st, 52nd, and he's 52nd. The guy that I thought who would potentially go is 51st in the world, who would have been a nice sneaky one is Adam, Adam Scott. Scott yeah. Adam Scott. I yeah. thought yeah. would someone might have gone for him? He's but. stinky at the moment. I right. Think. So do I need to do my final pick? You do. You do. It's a head heart situation again, but I'm gonna carry over from last year someone who on the face of things, had a pretty average year. A 36 average points per tournament last year. Not terrible. Which is not terrible, but he's removed the weight from his driver. <laughs> <laughs> he's, you know, he's got, he's got a bit more of that speed that he's after. He's got the distance. If he can keep, if he can keep those 17th at the Opens off of his scorecard, things might go well for Matt Fitzpatrick. Mm, okay. Good. Interesting. Okay. Mm, very good. I was kind of tempted by his brother, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, He's just going to redo what he did in the Open. Uh, yeah. Well, fantastic. Um, so those are our major picks, our major brackets. We will have our first results after. Are we doing the same forfeit again? I think that makes sense. sense. Yeah. 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 Am I filling the couple again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will see. Uh, let us know who you think uh, is going to win this year's major picks. Mm. And, of course, we hope you are looking forward to the Masters. Get yourselves tucked in. Get yourselves a hot cup of cocoa because it's going to be a long, warming evening, which puts us into the new golfing season uh, guys thank you it's for listening thank you for watching uh, guys thank you for the podcast once more yes. I'll see you next time come on the picks enjoy the masters come everyone come on
See you. See you later.